On Wednesday afternoon, I pick up the children from school. It's like the lines at Disneyland. Just when you think you're getting close to the school, they take you around another building. Slowly moving forward, I eventually made it to the front of the line and found Dustin and Sarah waiting for me. Now that they are 13 and 14, I am not allowed to show any affection. Ugh, disgusting, Dad. What if my friends see you doing this? Yes, they have reached the age where I work as a driver, an ATM, and a food bank. I answer the phone on Wednesdays because Hannah has her weekly project review. She leads the design team at the interior design company where she works. They build luxury office spaces and mansions. As part of a national organization, they make sure every project is special. There's nothing worse than seeing something you paid handsomely for appear in someone's corporate PR press release. Needless to say, I was surprised to see Hannah's sedan in the driveway. Maybe she left something behind that she needed. Otherwise, why wouldn't she go into the garage? While parked in my part of the garage, the kids jumped out and attacked the refrigerator. Hey, take it easy, guys. Save room for dinner. Setting my briefcase on the floor, I walked into the living room to find Hannah curled up on the couch covered with a blanket. The day was warm and the house was definitely not cold. Hey, baby, what's going on? I don't feel very well. My stomach is doing somersaults and I'm having problems. What do you think this is? Must be some kind of flu. Okay, so why aren't you in bed? I was, but I had an accident. Could you please change the sheets? Taking two steps into the bedroom, I realized what had happened to her. I went out to the garage and grabbed a nose clip and some latex gloves. At the very least, all of our beds come with waterproof mattress covers. An old habit. When children were little, they would climb into bed and sometimes have accidents. Now we are ready, but they will only crawl into our bed when they feel worse than the dog. I wasn't going to cook dinner after this ordeal, so I ordered pizza and took a shower, emptying a can of air freshener. I sure as hell hope I don't get what Hannah is struggling with. After a week of suffering and cleaning up the crap, Hannah made an appointment with our family doctor. It was pretty much a waste of time. Predictable answers. Probably the flu. Give him a little more time. See you in a week if this doesn't go away. So two weeks later... Hannah went to the doctor again. She lost several pounds because she didn't eat for fear it would come out the other end. Energy drinks are her cuisine. The doctor ran some blood tests, but nothing was far enough out of range to warrant any further action. Over the next few weeks, Hannah learned to live with it. She felt like crap, pun intended, and was wearing adult diapers and baggy pants to hide the fact. It was my job to pick up the groceries. No, I didn't use a list. It was easier to pay the full fare and have Hannah place the online orders. While the kids and I wanted something to do on the weekend, Hannah never felt up to it. We did some things without her. Our personal life has suffered greatly. There is nothing surprising. Who wants to do dirty things when you risk doing even more dirty things? At least I jerked off from time to time. Oh, shit. Two months later, Hannah turned to a specialist. Of course, she felt great the day before and on the day of her appointment. They did blood tests until our insurance deductible was met. Kiss these five pieces goodbye. Some elevated levels of unknown enzymes were found in her intestines. It made sense, but it wasn't explained why. Possibly Crohn's disease, but tests for that were negative. She was given the oh-so-popular, keep an eye on this. One evening, I jokingly asked, do you think I make you sick? How can you say that? You've been great taking care of me since this started. I'm so tired of fighting this. I wish they would find something, anything. Hannah's new life was that of a recluse. She worked a lot at home and rarely went outside. Her weight dropped another 20 pounds. From time to time, she felt better, but that only lasted until the weekend. The kids were so busy with their sports schedules that they really didn't notice how rarely Hannah attended their games. Time passed as usual. Hannah wasn't sick enough to miss work, but she was slowly losing her team. Management demoted her. Months turned into years. Hannah felt guilty that we weren't having sex, so she took one at a time, about once a week. It was better than nothing. After Dustin turned 16, 
he became hell on wheels. I no longer had to worry about getting him and Sarah to and from school. Now I had to worry about why they weren't home. At least Hannah was trying to help. She rarely felt 100%, but she learned to live with it. For a while, Hannah seemed to be getting better with her bowel problems, but that only lasted about six months. When the problems returned, everything was just as bad as before. Hannah cried a lot. Her life went on as usual. Dustin graduated from high school and was heading to college. Sarah graduated early and was also out the door. The day after Sarah graduated from high school, I cornered Hannah. We need to talk. Fine. What's the matter? I filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. The stunned look turned into full-blown rage. Did you cheat on me? How can you do this to me? The kids have grown up, and it's time for me to move on. How can you leave now? I know the last five years have been hard, but I never stopped loving you. What have I done to deserve this? Dennis Wilson. Hannah's eyes widened. No matter how hard she tried, she could not hold back her tears. You knew? This is a stupid question. I was just biding my time until the kids left for college. It was cheaper to support you while they lived at home. I hope it was worth it. But John, that was many years ago. We've already been through this. I'm sorry. I was wrong and shouldn't have done this. Cry me a river of tears. Wrong or not, you did it and felt no remorse. Heck, you even contacted him again once you felt better. Back off. As soon as I moved, Hannah instantly perked up. She no longer suffered from intestinal problems. I really made her feel sick. We sold the house and split the profits. I thought I could avoid counseling, but that wasn't the case. The result remained unchanged. I would rather take a chance on a new search than continue with a known cheater. When I found out that Hannah was having an affair with Dennis Wilson, I was devastated. I came across Hannah's secret email account, so I installed a program on my phone to monitor her activities. You spend your life dedicated to your partner and find that you are not enough for her. The obsession with scorching the earth faded into the background as my lawyer outlined how bleak my future life would be, penniless, while Hannah will be able to accommodate her lover in the house, in the same house that we bought together, but which I spent all my free time restoring. It's cheaper to keep it. Wait until the children leave home. The lawyer drilled it into my head that Hannah could file for divorce at any time and my fate would be pretty shitty. This was enough to the point that I thought about fleeing the country. In the end, I did everything I could to remain her husband. I stayed, and my children became my life, counting down the days. It was while searching the internet that I found the April Fool's joke. Mixing two over-the-counter liquid veterinary drugs may cause intestinal upset, so I bought and stored a large bottle of each in the garage and got a pack of syringes from China. Using the indicated syringes, I injected the mixture into Hannah's coffee supplies. She loves the blueberry and hazelnut mix. The kids didn't drink coffee and I hated the mixture. For the first few days, Hannah didn't complain at all until I increased the dose of the formula. That's why that first Wednesday was so hard for her. I've clearly gone overboard. Of course, I used too much early on, but eventually I found a happy medium. It was enough to make her feel like crap, but not bad enough to send her to the doctor. It was funny how her friends, after drinking a cup of spoiled coffee together, then caught the flu. Friendly fire. I discovered that she turned Dennis down on multiple occasions. No, it wasn't because she didn't want him, she just didn't feel ready for it. He finally gave up. After a few years, I thought Hannah's novel was dead and buried. That's when I cut back on the medication. Although not completely, since I was still in revenge mode. But then Hannah reached out to him again. I increased the dosage and Hannah relapsed. A week later, she again turned to the specialist. The day before and on the day of her appointments, I made sure Hannah used conditioned coffee. Although she claimed that she was devastated and unprepared for my divorce petition, I was not moved by her tears. It was only after I gave her the investigator's report from five years ago that she realized how serious I was. Dennis's wife received a copy and named Hannah in her divorce petition. 
I made sure all of Hannah's friends and family received copies, which caused my phone to stop ringing. I was no longer the uncaring, heartless bastard who abandoned a hopelessly ill Hannah in her time of need. Dennis suffered greatly during the divorce. Now he eats ramen noodles and drinks water while his ex-wife entertains his replacement. I find this to be revenge enough. As much as I'd like Hannah to know how I did it, I'm afraid I may have crossed some legal lines. So I grin a lot. Will I get married again? Most likely no. Maybe. Who knows? I can't even enjoy dating without fearing the heartbreaking pain Hannah caused me. Time Heals is my last hope. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. About listening to the next one. 